three years ago, I set out to construct the most powerful nootropic stack for focus, motivation, and sheer cognitive horsepower. I logged hundreds of hours, sampled endless amounts of cognitive performance chemicals, and ran beta tests with soldiers from the United States Army. And after massive experimentation and ruthless trial and error, my work had finally paid off. I found what I was looking for. I think probably one of the most rewarding elements of making commercial stack, selling a commercial stack, and then having folks subsequently review the commercial stack is th them telling me, look, I, I have this particular limitation when it comes to brain function. You know, I, I take your stack, the limitation goes away. Then I can focus on my work. Then I'm verbally fluent. Then when I talk to clients, I sound like I know what I'm talking about. And then throughout the day where I would sort of be scattered, like, you know, looking at Facebook or some other sort of social media thing or trying to do some research and I kind of end up on one of those paths, those journeys that people end up on, on the internet where you're like two, three hours later, you've done a bunch of stuff and maybe some of it's relatively connected to what you're doing, but ultimately it's not impactful. Well, they can actually sit down and focus. The Cortex stack is, I mean, basically riddled with reviews like that. It's basically crazy. You've got people in the YouTube channel here, on our on our YouTube channel, subscribers that are going, hey, attention everybody, check it out, I took the stack. It was awesome. We recently talked about Cortex and coffee. That's a combination you guys have to try if you haven't tried the stack. It's very powerful, and that's because uridine potentiates caffeine and or caffeine and uridine potentiate each other. Um, and look, we tried to build a stack that that is a natural version of modafinil. That's what we tried to mimic building the stack and our customers align with that notion. Secure a bottle of Cortex at the website, livecortex.com. You're gonna love it. I think I'm gonna get an email from some of you guys going, yeah, this is crazy, or or more comments are gonna fill up in these in these videos saying, look, you're honest something, you built a good stack here. Livecortex.com for what's being called. The only pre-made stack that's actually noticeable. We combine uridine monophosphate and CDP choline. Very stimulatory, very focus-inducing, incredibly good at facilitating verbal fluency. I mean, look at me, I took it today. I didn't even drink coffee yet, I just took the Cortex stack. Verbal fluency on Optimus Prime. Okay, now I'm a transformer. All right, uh, livecortex.com. Okay, so uh, so look, I've been talking a lot about theanine lately. I talk a lot about theanine in general, and that's because it's. I love it. I love L-theanine. It's one of my favorite nootropics. It's it's, it's very light. Um, you know, I would imagine it's it's a lot less. Not that other nootropics might be hard on your liver, but when we're talking about things like armadafinil, there there is significant liver, uh, probably detox pathways that have to deal with uh, what, what, what the liver might see, it, what the liver understands as a drug. You know, the liver's got these detox pathways, phase one and phase two, and they take components like drugs and they put them into a sort of cellular structure that allows you to urinate them out. The liver's gonna have to work harder with things like armadafinil, especially if you're taking it like a lot or every day. But theanine is one of those compounds that, at least looking at the mechanisms of it and sort of looking at the chemical structure of it, uh, it, it's just probably one of the safest nootropics you can take. And what's so awesome about it is everybody's come to understand is you can combine it with caffeine and other stimulants. That's what I've come to do over the, over the last four years of making distinctions in my 8.5 year stint of taking nootropics so far. It's like I've been making all the identifications. One of them is, I mean, you can take theanine with a lot of stimulatory stuff. And by the way, another video coming up where you can, where you can sort of switch to theanine, same concept with other stimulatory nootropics, but use something like St. John's Wort. Okay, so, but uh, I've always talked about L-theanine as being particularly helpful for people in balancing out stimulatory uh, nootropics and sort of putting them together and or as a standalone using it to, to calm yourself down when you need to, using it for bedtime, using it to calm the nerves in your in your throat and larynx. You know, we, we've got some people who've got uh, is it peripheral neuropathy or is it like a sort of neuropathy or some sort of, a, oh yeah, laryngosensory neuropathy where they've got some sensory issue, a nerve issue rather, in their throats, in their kind of airways, and th taking a thousand milligrams of theanine like nearly fixes the problem for them. Uh, but we've also talked about it in, in, in the in the sense of, you know, besides a sort of general calming sense, uh, in the sense of what it does for alpha brain waves. Like you've got these different brain waves, alpha, beta, uh, delta, theta, gamma. These are just oscillations of electrical activity that flow throughout your brain and, and, and can be measured. And one of the great things about theanine is in studies, it, it, it demonstrates that it can induce the alpha brainwave oscillation of electricity, which is associated with calmness. And that's really all we've sort of talked about in terms of mechanisms. But what's interesting 
is that uh, looking at a, um, a basically a, a breakdown of L-theanine on, on a place called PubChem, which we're going to talk about in another video, a cool place to go find stuff about nootropics, uh, the following is said. Uh, I think this is the, really the, the key part. Animal neurochemistry studies suggest, again, hard to extrapolate, we're not rats, but y you've got to draw the correlation. That's why they do these studies. They do these studies with these animals for a reason. Uh, that L-theanine increases, now here's a really critically awesome part, increases brain serotonin dopamine GABA levels and has micro uh, micromolar affinities for AMPA, <laughs> kinase, and N MDA receptors. In addition, has been shown to exert neuroprotective effects in animal models, possibly through its antagonistic effects on uh, group one uh, metabotrophic glutamate receptors. Like this is insane. It's talking about working on glutamate receptors in some interesting way, being neuroprotective. Uh, I think it displays a neuropharmacological suggestive of a possible neuroprotective and cognitive enhancing agent and warrants further investigation in animals and humans. Then brings up the notion of it being full on nootropic. I think a lot of people are sort of like, is the any nootropic? Like I've always, seen it as a nootropic, especially in combination with stimulants. I mean, these days, if I take modafinil, I'm taking theanine no matter what, right? If I take anything stimulatory that's pretty powerful, I'm taking theanine no matter what to calm down that extra potential for anxiety. But what's interesting is we're literally talking about in this particular study, L-theanine, the amino acid routinely found in green tea, uh, increases brain serotonin. It increases brain dopamine and it increases brain GABA. Okay, so now we've got a, a, a few more mechanisms to look at in understanding why theanine is so awesome, particularly in conjunction with stimulatory nootropics, but even on its own, right? It's working on neurochemistry. So, so we, we thought about like, well, how, how does it, I guess that's really the answer to how does it take the brain and put it into this alpha brainwave electrical oscillation. It's because it's increasing serotonin. And so I think that, you know, we, we, we've talked about this a lot. I mean, for me, uh, these days, if I take anything stimulatory, particularly modafinil, I've been helping a lot of people out with trying to take modafinil and not get to, not have anxiety. And, you know, one of the things that modafinil does, I mean, it does speed up the release of serotonin, but it also inhibits GABA in certain regions of the brain. So if you're, if you're increasing serotonin and you're increasing GABA in certain regions of the brain, then Theoretically, you're still going to get the powerful stimulatory effect of modafinil via its effect on catecholamines and other neurotransmitters, even GABA as well, but maybe not to the extent or at least not to an extent that takes people over the edge if you're taking theanine and thereby increasing serotonin and increasing GABA levels. How it's increasing dopamine levels and how that might interact with something like modafinil, no idea, might be powerful and obviously there's an interaction there because we know that modafinil works on dopamine to some extent as well. But suffice it to say, theanine is really becoming, I mean, these days in my top 10, you got anorastam, nupep, duridine, CDP coin, a pre-made stack would be cortex, and or alpha brain's a pretty cool pre-made stack, uh, you know, oxyracetam, uh, uh, you know, modafinil, a few, a few others. But theanine is absolutely 100% in my top 10 these days. I mean, there's no question about it. And it's becoming so much more versatile as we learn more about it. Thanks for watching.